Ladies and gentlemen, D. F***ing Steiner. What's going on? This is Sean with Strangeland Oddities. We are at Days of the Dead, North Carolina, Charlotte, with the legendary D. Snyder. How the hell are you, man? I'm doing great, man. These uh, cons are really unique opportunities for us artists. That's a terrible word, but we, you know, we usually perform with a at a distance. You know, whether in a movie or on stage, there's always that separation. And here, you get to meet with the people who've seen the movies, seen you on stage, and, and talk to them. That's cool. Nice. Now, just to give a little history about Strangeland is, back in 2007, I opened up a tattoo shop called Strangeland Body Modification in Florida. And hence, with Strangeland Oddities, the inspiration behind the both of the companies is uh, Dee's movie Strangeland. Um, now, when Strangeland first came out, body modification was first starting to make a boom. What made you get into the body modification? You know, yeah, that was over 20 years ago when I started, got writing it, about 22, 23 years ago. And I guess I, I, I don't exact. that's a really good question. <laughs> you know, because I don't, but I certainly was became aware that something was going on. It was a groundswell. I mean, now it's broken through on such a huge level. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it, there was something going on, you know, on, in, on the underground. And as I started to sort of peel the onion, so to speak, to learn about it, discover it, read about it, I just found this incredibly interesting and powerful world existed. Uh, and, you know, and then it's, and I had actually written Strange Land as a whole completely different script originally, a slasher film. But thankfully, Tom Savini told me it sucked, and um, <laughs> he did. <laughs> but then he explained why, that it was derivative. And I sort of went back and started over just with this idea of this character, Captain Howdy. But who was he? And when I discovered that world, it just, the story started to tell itself. And yeah, a lot of the horror fans didn't understand the body modification part of that movie. Yeah, I mean, people were, were mystified. The movie was way ahead of its time. It was the first... Uh, horror film rated R for scenes of torture. Yeah. Uh, the MPAA was freaking out. They'd never seen anything like it before. They were used to, they were cool with people being hacked up and stabbed, but the idea of someone living and suffering, that threw them for a loop, you know? Um, again, it was just, uh, it was a revelation to me, and in a large, in a, in a, in a way, I was pulling back that curtain a little bit and showing other people that this, this world there. But, and I need to say this, especially to the body modification fans out there, it was an education for me as well. Because initially when I came into it, I thought it was a way of, uh, of, 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 of uh, say, it was a sadomasochistic kind of thing. And it was a way of sort of hurting yourself and a way of uh, making, uh, of, of damaging your appearance, for lack of a better word. And I was quickly educated to, work, to, to realize that it was a beautification, it was an enhancement thing, it was changing and growing, and it was, you know, a rites of passage and all that stuff, and I came to understand it. And, you know, today I've got a daughter who's very, Cheyenne, who's very, very into that world. Mm -hmm. uh, some, some have called her Captain Howdy's daughter, uh, and I guess in a way she is. So uh, it, was, it was an education for me and I think the general public that 20 years ago. Nice. Now, it's been rumored so many years now about another strange land. Is that ever going to happen? You know, I've been... When Strangeland came out, it was greenlit for a sequel immediately. The script was written, and we were starting to head toward production. And the company that made the movie, The Shooting Gallery, literally got indicted by the federal government. Literally, there was arrests. They confiscated their materials. And for the next almost 10 years, I was in courts fighting for my creative rights because the courts just, they just want to dissolve everything and give it all away. And when I got it back, there had been many people along the way who said they were interested in doing something, but it kept falling through, kept falling through. 
right now I am once again 20 years later I've got some serious interest in making a sequel but when I went back and looked at the script I wrote 20 years ago it was so dated I have I'm rewriting it now so yes I have interest yes I, I you know I'm hoping this will get done but right now I'm in the rewriting process because the technology alone in right. 20 years yeah even you know the things that I had happening 20 years later, it's not so stun it's not so startling anymore, you know. So, right. uh, so I'm in rewrite phase, but hopefully, it'll happen. A, a lot of fans have actually submitted questions about making Strange Land like a series on like Netflix or Hulu or something like that. You know, I, that was one of the things that has been discussed over time. The idea of doing a sort of tales from the script, crypt kind of thing, where Captain Howdy sits in his lair, you know working on people and, and, and in between and the title Strangeland itself lends itself to well, what exactly is Strangeland. It could be like the Outer Limits, like the Twilight Zone. It could be so many different stories. So that has been discussed, you know, with all that's going on in the world of television and film these days, all the outlets. I'm cautiously optimistic that these things mm -hmm. will happen. Nice. Um, now, I saw that you have a uh, a couple of few movies that are in the works. Can you give your fans a little insight about that? Well, um, you know, w one of the things I did because I got tired of waiting for other people is started my own uh, production company. It's very real, working with um, a, a Tony Award and Emmy Award winning producer, Michael Alden. We partnered up and uh, we've got a few projects on, slated and financed. Um, one is a new movie that I've written. People said, why didn't you write something else? I said, because I wrote a groundbreaking film 20 years ago and I wanted something equally groundbreaking and I finally got the idea and I've created something. We've got financing on that. Um, and then a couple of other, ho other horror films like the Strange Man sequel and other creative ideas that I've, have, that I've had that I'm working on. But we've sort of put everything on hold because we have got, I can't, I'm, I'm gonna tease you here. We have right. got, we are secured the rights to one of the biggest franchises in the history of horror for a remake, reboot, and we are, um, we're hoping, and we're just waiting for the contracts to get signed, and we decided that this is gonna be our priority. You're saying, which one, D, which one? Well, stand by with, I say in a month, once the contracts are done, you'll be hearing and going, oh crap. That's what he was doing. So I'm very excited to have secured this, this I said, this legendary horror franchise. Nice. And uh, with your music, uh, I heard that you're coming out with a new album shortly. Yeah, Jamie Josta, the great Jamie Josta from Hate Breed and Headbangers Ball. He, on his podcast, challenged me to do a contemporary metal album. Mm. And uh, I said, well, who's producing? He said, I will. I said, who's writing? He said, everybody. And <laughs> we, with no record deal, we went to the studio just, just with the passion to do it. And people from Disturbed, from Lamb of God, from Kill Switch Engage, from Arched Enemy, they were coming out of the woodwork wow. to get involved with the record. And then there was a bidding war from all the major uh, heavy metal labels oh, wow. for it. And then Jamie came to me and said, uh, I know we should call this record For the Love of Metal. And I said, I can't think of a better title because it was done, like I said, there was no money in it. There was nothing in it other than passion and inspiration. So that's, pre-sales are going now with Napalm Records. The album comes out on the 27th. I know first tracks are going to Metal Radio June 1st. So um, get ready for the yes. love of metal. Yeah, Jamie is a great guy. I love great. him. And I also saw you in my friend Chris Sorelli's uh, Motionless in White video. Yeah, I, uh, you know, uh, I remember the first time I, I, my daughter, I told you, she's hardcore. She's, <laughs> she's the hardest core. Uh, she is beyond hardcore. I love you, Cheyenne. And uh, she uh, took me to a show she wanted to see. It was Motionless in White. And uh, this is what I'm going to do in the clubs. And uh, I was, she was in the 12 or 13, and she's like up in the front row, and I'm standing on the side of the stage, and Chris is on stage, and he's doing his thing, and you're me, I'm Chris, and he's like this, and he's like this, and he comes, and he sees me, and he's, and he's just face, like face drops for a second, and he goes, and then he goes back and rocks, and uh, we met at that point. My son directed a couple of the videos. Oh, nice. Um, for them. Uh, and I wound up being cast in one of the videos as well. So we've been friends ever since. 
Nice. All right. Well, I do appreciate the time you taking out of your busy schedule here. You've been swamp packed, which is awesome. And it's definitely a pleasure because strange land means a lot to me, man. I thank you for uh, taking it and running and being inspired by my sickness. Again, uh, oh, uh, we have uh, another legend. We have another legend over here. Except that's why I was pointing at you before. Because somebody was, no, come on, step in. <laughs> somebody was somebody was saying, do you know like this guy's the greatest special effects guy and blah, blah, blah. Wow. He was going on and on. That's why I was pointing at you. We were going. Me? So you, sweet. you were doing that night at the Roxbury thing. You've right? interviewed me when the uh, late duress came out on Fangoria Radio. Oh, you yeah. on, the, on the air, not yeah, in the studio. Yeah, on the air. And then I met you. Uh, remember my buddy House? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought this is what we were talking. Yeah, yeah. We we're trying to be conversational. You remember my buddy Hal Sparks when you did celebrity duets? I love Hal. Yeah. So uh, I was oh. in Hal's metal band with him. I oh. played bass with him. He's so. a, isn't he? What a great isn't he badass? I got his record and I I I, I, I emailed him. I said, "You suck." I, I said, "What don't you do well?" The record. You're funny D as fuck. Doug Jones. Uh, not Doug Jones, uh, Doug uh, Pinnock from King's X produced it for us. Yeah, and he's funny I'm sitting there trying to play bass in the studio great, in front of Doug. Sings great, writes great. Uh, it's amazing. He, he, you know, acts great, yeah. and, you know, and he kicks ass. Great guy. That's out. amazing. Anyway, it's good but to anyway, meet you yes, good to see you again. I, I wanted to ask you a question. Right. Forget for your age. How do I get in D. Snyder's shape, period? <laughs> you know what, people... What's your regimen? Uh, people, that's what people ask, ask me all the time, and it's, it's good news, bad news situation. The good news is it isn't like... It's like, you know, oh, four hours a day, seven days a week in the gym. No, but the bad news is it's been kind of a lifetime thing for me. I never did drugs. I never drank. Yeah. I've been working just st into fitness and health. I was like a rock and jock. Mm -hmm. I was like the weirdest thing the guy in the world. Nobody in the rock community got me. And I look at them and go, you do realize it's a marathon, mm -hmm. not a sprint? Mm -hmm. Like, they're all sprinting. And I'm going, dude, I'm going for 85. 90 years so old. So it's a lot of clean living, probably a little genetics, but then day to day now, what do you do? You have a crazy regimen? I just have always just eaten, you know, right, not perfect. <laughs> it, it always tell people it's just a little bit consistently. Yeah. yeah. That is the key. Yeah. If you're doing, you know, 45 minutes of working out a couple days a week, you're doing 20, 30 minutes of aerobics a couple days a week, you know. It's not a, just, but just consistency right. will will work for you. All right. It's not like there's no like you know quick fix. Yeah, you can go on a crash diet, you can go to the gym, right. but if you don't keep up, it's not going to like stay you with said, you. Like you said, it's a marathon. It's a marathon. It's just sort of a you know it's like the, what the turtle and the mm -hmm. hare. You know the, the hare was sprinting away, and the turtle was just. I'm just going, man. I'm going. To, I'm going a distance. So. All right. Let me ask you this: When you want to cheat. What does D. Snyder like to eat when he wants to cheat oh and just eat God, anything? I love Carlo. You love what? <laughs> my Twitter fans know I love pancakes. It was my most <laughs> biggest tweet I ever put, put put online. I've written important things, artistic things. The day I wrote I love pancakes, three words, the Twitterverse That's blew amazing. up. And with thousands you and thousands. And I broke, uh, yes. So, so <laughs> fuck music. I love pancakes. I'm going to get an endorsement. Thanks, D. Right. Good seeing you again, brother. Somebody actually brought me that. And that's Robert Greenhall, everybody. Hey, let's get a quick, uh, just sort of like screen grab. So screen grab. All right, everybody. Strangeland Audis, Days of the Dead, Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you. Peace.